Nine ways to let go of your limiting beliefs so you can find love again. Boundaries only exist in your head. The worst prison of all is the one we humans build for ourselves. It's the invisible walls in our minds that prevent us from being happy. They consist of false beliefs, self-limiting convictions, and the words of our inner critics who find fault with us. Such mental barriers seem impenetrable. They were usually erected in our childhood and youth, which makes them particularly stable and insurmountable. They're not a protective barrier. On the contrary, they imprison us. They keep us away from all the beautiful things that are out there waiting for us, including love. Here, we reveal how you can break through the boundaries of your thinking and the shackles of these mental barricades. Number one, become courageous. Of course, this sounds easier than it is. No one wakes up in the morning and suddenly has a fighter's heart and the courage of a lion. What can help you is this thought experiment. Every time you don't dare to do something or don't trust yourself to do something, look at your lifeline. How old are you? How old do you think you will be? Realizing your own mortality is unpleasant and not a nice thought, but it shows how quickly life can be over and how quickly we could regret tomorrow that we weren't a little braver today. Number two, think and speak positively about love. A good attitude starts with a positive mindset. What we think, speak, and feel shapes our appearance and our impact on others. Imagine you are love. Someone thinks you're a disappointment, a disaster, an illusion, and an imposter who just wants to play her game and win. If you were love, you'd probably be on the run too. You would look for company that appreciates your worth or at least makes the effort to get to know your true nature. Promote love, praise it to the skies, and honor its status as a universal heavenly power. As we all know, stars want to be courted. Number three, be good to yourself. It's not just love that reacts offended to insults. You and your ego, your heart and your mind also need positive reinforcement. Otherwise, you'll live an eternal existence as an involuntary single person. Many people find it incredibly difficult to love themselves. So start by not constantly castigating yourself internally when you fail or don't get something right the first time. Become generous towards yourself and also gracious and understanding. These are all precursors to love. Number four, look closely, discover love. We attract into our lives what we focus our attention on. In the future, therefore, try to look for signs of love and affection everywhere. Look at couples, happy families, laughing children, where do you find hearts everywhere? How often do you hear a love song on the radio? Watch romantic movies, read romance novels, and prepare yourself for love from head to toe. This is the only way to help it along. Number five, concentrate on the present. The biggest killer of anything good we can expect from life in the future is holding on to the past. Regardless of whether you glorify it and mourn a past love, or whether it hurt you so much that you've sworn off love forever, it's over. Dwelling on yesterday is the worst and strongest enemy if you want to be happy today. There's no point in complaining about spilled milk or forever operating a what-if thought carousel. Number six, don't devote too much time to negative thoughts. Pay attention to the whispers of your mind. It may be clever, but it doesn't always mean well with you. As soon as you find yourself exposed to the crossfire of inner criticism, imagine a stop sign in your mind. You can also stand in front of a mirror and say, stop, out loud, when you finally want your mind to play something nice for you. Number seven, look for good examples of relationships and partnerships. If love were really only bad and disappointing, how do you explain the many perfectly happy marriages and relationships that exist in every environment? Of course, you can't look behind every facade, but everyone knows couples who exude that certain something and are obviously still very fond of each other. Focus your attention on them, not on the divorce rate or other love dramas. Number eight, past and future are not the same thing. Love is not a karmic debt or a burden carried over from one lifetime to the next. It's also not hereditary or genetically pre-programmed or part of our DNA. Keep an open mind and an open heart and believe all good things are possible. Number nine, Recognize and eliminate your negative beliefs. Whenever a destructive phrase creeps into your mind, put an end to it. 
It has lost nothing in your head and has already cost you enough hope and optimism. The tiresome inner monologue, I'm not beautiful, good, interesting, or clever enough for love has had its day once and for all. Give life a chance. Staying in our comfort zone has one major advantage, but on closer inspection, this can prove to be a fatal disadvantage. Safety is the key word. By nature, we're constantly looking for it. And for many of us, life seems like a single threat. Holding on to the familiar may be comfortable and safe, but new things, and above all, new acquaintances, will not happen there. If you want to find love, you shouldn't look for it too ambitiously. It will come when it's ready. But of course, we shouldn't close ourselves off to it. Our heart in particular, but also our mind, are either friend or a foe here. There's nothing in between. If you can't let go of negative beliefs and the certainty that you don't deserve love and happiness, you will come away empty-handed in this game. The fear of being hurt is of course justified, but as Seth Godin wrote so convincingly, if it scares you, maybe it's worth a try.